Yeah, and the Jenkins Minus family has no idea why someone would want to kill this 22-year-old woman the day after Thanksgiving. And with it happening so close to the holidays, the pain is just unbearable. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we have another story time, and this story time is about a beautiful young lady named Deja Jenkins Minus. Now, Deja Jenkins Minus was born February 15, 1999, and basically, she had a warm heart. She was loving, and she was a family-oriented person. Now, Deja graduated from high school with honors, no doubt. And also, she started taking college classes. Now, as by her social media, she looked at like a happy, like inspirational, motivated, pretty young lady. I mean, you can tell she had so much joy and love in her heart. And most importantly, family members describe her as this beautiful soul that loved her mother and family with all her heart. Now, Deja basically would wind up meeting a guy named Lenard Robertson. Now, Lenard Robertson basically grew up a lot around violence. Like, he just grew up around violence and wound up starting doing these things himself. Now, he was on house arrest and basically on probation. So Lenard stayed into trouble, but Lenard was also known as a well rapper in Boston. Now, at this time, Deja and Lenard would meet and they just looked like they love each other. You know how social media can be. It looks like they're all good and they're loving, you know, by everybody else through their pictures. But deep down, it's a really dark secret. Now, Lenar and Deja, basically, they just looked happy together. Eventually, Deja would get pregnant by Lenar, and she looked at like she was excited, happy. She stayed posting pictures, talking about how she is getting ready for her baby, like doing little TikToks. Deja looked at excited. But soon, everyone would realize that that was not exactly true. Now, Lenard didn't seem as happy as Deja because eventually, after Deja has her beautiful baby girl, things would take a turn for the worse. September 20th, 2021, Deja would give birth to her beautiful baby girl. Now, Lenard just, you know, he wasn't really saying too much like Deja was on her social media while she was pregnant. And then after, he wasn't really saying much. But something took a huge turn where everybody would start to basically hear Lenard's side. Now, Lenard will go on posting something on his Facebook, basically saying that he don't feel like Deja's daughter is his and he would want a DNA test because he felt like Deja was cheating throughout the relationship. Now, I don't understand because it seemed like Deja and Lenard's relationship was on and off, but I'm assuming when it was on, he felt like Deja was cheating, but Deja stand 10 toes down and she came back to say, I know who my child's father is and basically Lenard is my child's father. And so both of them would start posting little stuff back and forth on Facebook, on social media. And it got to a point where Deja was like, basically saying like, my daughter going to have a good holiday. I got my daughter back regardless. Like she was saying that she got her baby. And I don't understand why Lenard was over eased because Deja family was willing to support her, help her take care of her beautiful baby. What parent wouldn't want to be excited, especially with a like newborn? Oh my God. Like, what would make Lenard go down this deep, dark road when um, Deja wound up having a beautiful daughter? 
we want to know. So, two months after Deja gave birth to her beautiful baby girl, it will be Thanksgiving Day. She will go and visit her family um, at her parents' house for Thanksgiving. You know, all the family there, everybody's having fun. Uh, Deja's smiling. She's excited to be there because she was a family-oriented person. She just loved being around her family. But she also wanted to take her beautiful baby to see her dad. So her plan was to basically go there and then come back to Boston to spend the rest of Thanksgiving with her family. But unfortunately for Deja, things would take a turn for the worse. So time start going by and Latoya, Deja's mother, realized that she still haven't made it back yet, even though she said that she was going to come back. So everybody started calling Deja like, hello, like Deja, like pick up, like what's going on? Texting, calling Deja, no response. So now Deja's mother is getting worried. So she starts doing the iPhone thing, you know, when you can track people iPhones. So she literally tracks Deja's phone and Deja's phone is pinging off of Lenard's house back in Lowell. So now she's getting kind of worried because she know it was a back and forth thing on social media. So why would Deja even take her beautiful daughter and her down in? Maybe they worked, you know, something out and the family just didn't know. But her mother jumps in the car like a mother's intuition and she gets in the car and go down to Lenard's house. So basically she get there and it's dark. Now she go around to the doors and try to open it, but the doors are locked. Now Deja mother is getting really worried. So she sits out there in the car for a couple of hours, come and go, come and go. And then she wind up asking Lenard neighbors, have they seen a young lady go in, Deja? And so a neighbor states that she seen Deja go in the house with the baby in some diapers, but she never seen Deja coming out. Oh my God, what worst nightmare a mother could ever hear. So now Deja's mother like, you know, yeah, they don't call me Latoya for nothing. Basically, she was on it. So she waited a little longer, hoping and praying that the ping would show that Deja has moved locations, but it still never did. Into the wee hours of the morning, Latoya calls police and state that her daughter's missing. She haven't seen her daughter, but her phone is pinging at her boyfriend's house. Now, in the meantime, in between times, her boyfriend, Deja's boyfriend, cousin, wind up coming over at the same time and like circle the house or whatever and wind up getting through, I mean, getting in the house through a window. So then he gets in the house and realized that a room door is locked. He kicked the door open and see Deja lying lifeless in a pool of blood on the floor by a blow up mattress. Now, it looks that she had been really, really hurt and she's not there no more. But by that time, officers have arrived and officers and everything going to the house. They confirm Deja deceased, but they cannot find Deja's baby at all. So now they realize that Deja have been stabbed 58 times and also stabbed in the neck and in the back of the head. And it looked like her neck was snapped, like broke. So now like investigators are like, yeah, foul play instantly. So a day go by and they're not stating names on the news or anything. And they're so-called still trying to find a suspect, even though they found Deja at her boyfriend Lenard's house. And there's no Lenard, no way to be found, no baby, no nothing. So the mother is getting worried. And this is what she had to say. At 
just come forward. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not angry. I'm not. I'm more mad that they won't come forward. She begged and pleaded um, for someone to come forward because her daughter and her baby uh, granddaughter did not deserve whatever happened to them. Now, guess what? A shocking reveal. Now, for some odd reason, they couldn't find Deja's baby at all. Now, the grandmother is getting worried because if Deja is deceased, where is her granddaughter? November 26th, um, Deja's mother went home, Latoya, and all of a sudden, Deja's baby is there. Like, the baby just teleported, like, out of the blue, pow, just came about. And everybody is like, hmm. Now, the baby was not harmed, touched, bruised, or anything. The only thing that was out of order with the baby is the baby diaper had blood on the diaper. So, most likely, it could have been Deja's or, I don't know, like, by her basically having self-defense wounds, she could have scratched Lennar or anything. So at this point, it could have been Lennar blood or Deja's. But we know that Deja fought for her life down to the last breath. I mean, she had defensive wounds on her hands and everything. She was going to go down without a fight. But imagine your life is about to be swept off your feet and you cannot do anything to save your two month year old baby so you could imagine like how hurt how pa much pain that deja was in especially with her fighting for her life at the same time as not actually knowing what might happen to her baby if she don't survive so yes, Deja showed a lot of signs at the forensic was done of fighting for her life. Now, Lenard was still nowhere to be found. Now, eventually police start investigating, looking into everything and realized that Lenard had been in trouble twice and he was pulled over for gun charges. So he was on probation and a house arrest for like gun charges, like two guns was in a Kia car up under the seat and he got caught in the car. So he was facing two actual gun charges and some other charges. And remember, Lenard was growing up in a rough neighborhood with drugs. He was an upcoming rapper, local rapper. And so Lenard basically was already in a heap of trouble already. So they start trying to track Lenard's like um, house arrest uh, band that goes around his leg. And they tracked him at his house the same exact time Deja was there. And then they tracked his every movement after because it's like a, like it tells you where to go. It's like a navigation to track him. So then it shows that he wound up cutting the band off his leg, the house arrest band off his leg. So eventually police pinged his last move and found him at a nearby house. Now, they found him at this nearby house and this is a witness that was there watching it to make sure police don't hurt him. And this is what the video shows. All right, relax, relax. He's not doing anything. Calm down. No, no, calm down. Calm down. Y'all can calm down. He didn't. Hold on. He's good. He's good. He's good. I got you on that dog. I got you. I got you on that dog. Yep. You're going to come over here. You're going to come out. We're going to freeze the apartment. All right, all right. Get your hands off me. Don't be touching me. After they brung Lenar in, they questioned him about the murder of Deja. And then after that, they charged him with the murders. Now, once he went to trial, Lenar had this poker face. Like, he didn't care that he killed Deja. Like, he didn't kill, uh, care that his child wouldn't have a mother and now wouldn't have a father. Like, he was just puzzle faced. And I don't know if it looked like that because he had the face mask on or he just didn't care. 
but who would say that he did and he stabbed her 58 times i mean that's hard to believe but it broke deja's mother down latoya so bad it was hard for her to hold in her emotions and at times it would break her down i mean look at his face like he don't even care that he killed latoya's daughter like it was heartbreaking and like you just wanted to jump over the thing and wring his neck i mean lenard of course he grew up around a lot of violence he also was in a couple of things himself where he had his own charges out on probation wearing a leg monitor the list goes on but you did not have to kill your child's mother at all and the way lenard killed her he stabbed her he wanted her to suffer he wanted it so bad like he was so angry and i don't know if it was just because of the social media back and forth but whatever it was it gives him no amount right or reason to brutally murder someone that he said he loved i mean that was hard to believe and even though he states that he believed that deja basically cheated on him in the beginning on his facebook post like it doesn't prove that that was true and sometimes people just have that in their head for no apparent reason that they will put anything on someone else now deja still stated on social media in front of everybody that she know Lenard was her child's father. I mean, Lenard, all you had to do was get a DNA test. Like, that was it. You didn't have to take this beautiful soul, this beautiful mother, this dr uh, driven, um, empowered, loving soul away from the face of this earth, away from her beautiful daughter, away from her loving mother and family like that was just harsh that was pure evil and we hope that deja and her family will get justice and most importantly her baby girl she don't deserve to go without a mother and let alone two parents and the brutal thought and the way someone would have to explain how her mother lost her life or crossed over into a better world will be so heartbreaking to this beautiful little girl. I mean, to know that you were there and your mother was being murdered while you were in the same house and by your father is tragic. So you guys, we pray for Deja's mother, most importantly, her daughter, because she's going to need all the love and support if she needs. And hats off to this mother for knowing and feeling deep down in her heart that something was wrong with her baby. And going and figuring it out herself. And we just pray that the Lord give this mother strength, her daughter strength, and this entire family, this community that Deja had waiting on her to come back. And she never did. So you guys, don't forget to like, comment, and definitely subscribe to this channel because I have more story times coming. I appreciate the old subscribers and the new subscribers and the ones that are also helping me get my watch hours. I really appreciate you guys. So remember to subscribe, you guys. Peace.